This is Boxing Tickets NI. We are delighted to be joined. I, I think we're doing this in advance, Richie, but um, obviously I'm not sure at what stage J and JB Promotions can let me put this out, but obviously this is Wednesday. Obviously, the press conference is Friday, so it depends on obviously when I'm allowed to put this out, but yeah, yeah. obviously you, you just obviously turned over professional. You're obviously a happy, happy man right now. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Um, I've been out of the game a long time. Got back into it last year. Uh, boxing the intermediates there. Had to give a good account of myself. Got a great win in the quarters. Questionable loss in the semis. But look, that's boxing. What can you do? But um, yeah, we're turning over pro now. That's what my intentions always were. It's a lifelong goal. And I'm delighted to be just in this opportunity I have in this place that I'm in at the minute. And looking forward to it. I can't wait to get going. It's I guess it's like anything sometimes it's like it's like something new. We're obviously just past Christmas there. Obviously everybody gets excited in Christmas and what they're getting. Mm. Obviously it feels like Christmas Eve to yourself until you put them gloves on professionally for the yeah. first time. You'll be giddy, you'll be nervous, you'll be like, How do you fight? You know, it's all the emotions are run through your head again. Yeah, well obviously I don't know what it's like to be fucking sorry for Chris. It's all right. <laughs> in professional, you know, it's my first fight, but um to me, it's just like any other fight, really. You know, I've been boxing my whole life, fighting my whole life. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a few slaps in it. Do you know what I mean? There's worse things going on in life to be worried about. But um, yeah, it's all about in the preparation. You know, once I train right, proper discipline, get me food right, and get myself in the best possible shape, but then it's all down to me. Everything else will fall, in, fall into place after that, really. Do you know what I mean? So Definitely. you'll only kind of be nervous and full of edge and all if you haven't prepared properly. And uh, right now, we're about three weeks into training camp now, and everything's going well, sparring, good amount of rounds. So, you know, we're in a good place. We're in a good place. And still, we're about six or seven weeks away as well. So, plenty of time to keep, keep going, getting better and sharper and fair, you know. So, so would I be right in saying then, obviously, I'd always like to get a bit of the backstory because obviously until I knew that you were turning pro, being totally honest, because I, I, it's hard to follow professional box and amateur box at the same time, yeah, yeah. Like reporting on and everything else. So, like, I didn't obviously know too much about you. So, for me, more than anything, this is for me to get to sort of know a bit more about you as, as you embark on your pro journey. But, so what age did you start boxing? And, and was it was it like three friends? Was there obviously other family connected? What got you started? Yeah, so um, how I was, obviously I grew up on the Halton side. So what it was, I started boxing when I was about seven. But the lads I used to hang around with, all my, all my cousins and stuff like that, they were all a couple of years older than me, you know, like nine, 10, 11 and stuff like that. But they be, they used to go to the boxing clubs and stuff like that. But I was too young at the time. But uh, so when they used to go to the, leave the site, like to go boxing, I used to be left on the site on my own, so on the kind of way. So I just reached out to my uncle then. Uh, that'd be my, my cousin's father. He used to bring the lads, and I, I begged him kind of to more or less, could, I, could he bring me? So we gave a fake age to the boxing club and stuff like that, and I ended up getting in then. Uh, our first one was Fibsworth. Oh, Paddy Delaney, God rest his soul. Um, he used to, uh, he was running that club at the time, him and Richie Fox. So that was my first ever club, but I wasn't there for too long. Then I went to Ashburn, and then... Um, Ended up in Mulhuddard then, and I won uh, Irish titles there with Jerry McDay. Uh, won four Dublin titles, a Leinster title, had a couple of international trips as well. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, we 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 had, we had a good we had a good time in that club uh, with Jerry McDay, very good trainer. Yes. Um. Yeah. Then um, got to about seventeen, eighteen, and I find kind of fell out of love with the sport. Just went off there and started kind of doing what you do at that age, drinking, party, and messing and stuff like that. You know. And then I was about, uh, about eight or nine years out of the game. Got back into it last year. Had a, I had a few fights planned for last year, for the whole of last year, actually. There were four or five fights that were left down, but I, they got cancelled last minute. But um, I went through full training camps with them. So I was kind of getting to a stage where I didn't know if I was going to be able to get back fighting or not as well. And then, thankfully, then in um, November, just kind of got, got run at the intermediate. So, yeah, I was delighted to get back there. Obviously, growing up with boxing, obviously you're saying there you sort of fall out in love with about 17, 18 years of age. With any sport nowadays, mm. you sort of get to that stage where you can, you're nearly at the age you're legal to buy, drink and things like that. Yeah. There's, there's too much temptation, you know, as we see it footballers, we see it all over, you know, people obviously get that where not even if it's mixing the wrong crowds, it's sort of like I can remember obviously 13 or 14 years of age going out and getting two, two and three litre balls of cider. Thinking it was cool and I started night to go drinking. But it's well, we used to get three for a ten or whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 easy done, you know. It's and and I guess anybody can fall into the trap. And sometimes people probably wouldn't be as honest to say, you know what, I went off the wrong track, sort of and that's what happened, obviously. Drink, drugs, women, they're all obviously a, a association sort of with that, you know. And 
I guess that's at home, but they ruin your life if you let it, you know. <laughs> well, I think then George Best. Moderation, about, moderation is what is key, you know. George nah, Best had a great, great quote. Obviously, he said that he obviously drunk a lot, drunk a lot, lot of drink. Obviously, went with a lot of women, and and the rest of the money he wasted. You know, <laughs> yeah, something along those lines. But it's a great quote. But obviously, he was renowned. Obviously, unfortunately, passed away with with obviously um, been an alcoholic and things like that. But I guess obviously it's. These things can happen in life, but as long as you learn your lessons from them, obviously it's 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 a, it's a mm. thing you know. You'd rather start early than be stuck to it later on in life. Um, well, well, a lot of people are telling me you should have fucking done the the boxing career first, and then you could have enjoyed it all with a few million pounds at the in your thirties. Then you know what I mean? I done it the opposite way around. I done it for the last ten years, but not to spend with it. And now we're trying to roll back the years now and get and rescue it before it's too late, so to speak. Yeah. But I guess that, that's life experience sometimes, isn't it? Obviously, if you had a turn pro, say, at 17 years of age, you probably mm. might have fell in love with very quickly. We see that success and stardom sometimes can take people down the wrong paths. You know, if you get a pile of money, mm. then obviously there's more temptation to go drinking and everything else, you know. Um, how did you obviously find yeah. growing up in your in your teenage years being a boxer? Obviously, you know, did obviously did you find it? I guess there's less, obviously you're less likely to be bullied and things like that, which is, oh, yeah, which is yeah. great for in any, any sort of combat sports good for nowadays. How did you find growing up as a teenager with boxing? Did obviously everybody always say, um, you know, if you, if you, mates would obviously say that you'll get them to batter someone because you're a boxer, you know, did, did people look at you any differently being a boxer? Uh, no, not really. When you see all of my mates now, we're all boxers and fighters anyway. Do you know what I mean? We were all doing our whole lives together. So it wouldn't be a case of, Someone starts at me, I'll get him. Do you know what I mean? It's not where he starts and you, you sort it out yourself. Do you know what I mean? But we all stood by each other. We all knew how to have a rap, you know, that kind of way. And, uh, but no, I never really sought myself any, any different than anyone else. I always got along with anyone, never put, put it on anyone or ever tried to show me way around it because of what I could do. But I suppose at the same time, like a lot of people wouldn't be really keen to, like, to start on you anyway. Like, but I never really had any issues. I never really had many street fights or anything like that. Um... Going up and like just purely on the street, never really kind of kept myself to myself. Was just training all the time. It was kind of more or less when I got into when I stopped uh, boxing, and that that's when all the kind of started getting into rows on the street. And do you know what I mean? I don't know. You'll probably see it on YouTube. There was a couple of couple of bare knuckle boxing fights and that as well uh, when I was younger and that as well. Do you know what that all came when I started boxing? While I was actively actually training and competing. I I've, I had never had any hassles. You know, I suppose I was just disciplined, and that's what the boss, that's the sport will do to you. It doesn't you don't really have any focus or want to go and do anything else. You know, you just when you're stuck into it and you're training and you're you're dedicated. You know, that's all you want to know. Do you know what I mean? It's when you go away from all that. That's when all the other stuff start falling into it. Do you know what I mean? And as I said, for the last couple of years, that's all I was doing. But for the last year or so now that I've been rededicating myself back to me boxing, you know, I'm seeing a lot of my life kind of just. Getting a bit better slowly but surely, you know. And we're only at the start of it now, and, and there's a good, there's a there's a good way, a long way to go. But um, yeah, you know, look, I'm happy where I am, and just that's the main thing, you know. Obviously, I cleared this with the obviously before we obviously started the interview, so that people don't think it, you know. And hopefully, by this stage, mm. people don't think I'm someone that's already clickbait. But obviously, I want to obviously talk. Obviously, um, obviously last year that obviously I think it was last year that obviously you you had attempted to take your own life, which is. Obviously, I guess yeah. probably the yeah. the the worst sort of times you can go through in life, and unfortunately, in every walk of life now, obviously, mental health's a a, a very dangerous thing, and our governments aren't doing enough to help people. The great the great news is obviously you're here, you're alive, you're telling the tale, you're rebuilding your life, and obviously, the yeah. professionals obviously going to give you that sort of motivation and drive to to get yourself back to obviously where you believe as a boxer, but obviously, tough and challenging times you've went through. Yeah, uh, very hard at the time. You know, I, I say this to a lot of people. A lot of people kind of they can't really resonate with people that do things like that. But I'm, I just kind of say, well, look, unless you're really in that kind of frame of mind and you're in that position, it's very hard to kind of understand what goes through someone's head at that. It's a dark time. It's a very scary time as well. You know what I mean? Well, as I said, look, I, I, it, it happened and I got out and it gave me a whole new lease of life. You know what I mean? I as soon as I got out of the hospital, I was in a coma for four days. Um, I got out of hospital. I was back training within three days and haven't looked back since. I was about three or four days out of hospital. I was running. I was doing little bits, just get myself back there. Do you know what I mean? But it just, it gave me a whole new lease of life that I was just like, you know, this can all end at any minute here. Do you know what I mean? You can really, that's how quick it can actually happen, you know? 
So the one thing I ever had in my life and the only thing I ever had potential to do with, with my life was boxing. So I fell completely back into it and I said, look, I'm going to give this one good last good try. And look, I'm 27 years of age now. I do it for three or four years. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I'm going to have putting everything that I have now into this and to give it one last shot before I get over the hill and I won't be able to do it. And, you know, it's it's all just hiccups and bumps, isn't it? It's your ups and downs in life. And, you know, right now I'm back. I'm starting to look slowly but surely get back up and a good, into a good place, you know. And uh, I never really ever want to go back to that mentality that I had last year. But again, it's all down to years of abuse and substance abuse and just not doing things the way you should be doing and not looking after your mental health and letting things get the better of you. And do you know what I mean? Because you're drinking and partying and drugging them all the time and shit happens to you. You're not in the right frame of mind as it is to deal with stuff like personal shit and stuff like that. So if you're on a come down, so to speak, and you're dying and you're crying and you're, you know what I mean? It's, it's a horrible place to be in as it is. And then you're dealing with all this personal shit coming on top of it. Do you know what I mean? You're not in the right frame of mind to be, you know, you're, you're, something cracks, something just goes. And unfortunately, that's what happened to me. Do you know what I mean? I just, my head wasn't in the right space to deal with all the shit that I was going through at the time. And yeah, just end up doing what, what I did. And obviously, it was a mistake, but at the same time, if I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't have got to have the, the headspace that I have now and where I want to go and where I'm tunnel vision on this dream. And I, but I don't think if I, if I didn't have to do that, I wouldn't have got back to be like this. You know what I mean? It's after giving me that kick in the arse and that motivating to, to get back and give this a good go. And that's what we plan on doing, yeah? There, there's obviously, you know, I, I have a lot of time for anybody that's obviously suffering from mental health or being through mental health because... Unless, you know, I personally haven't been through it. I've thought of it at times, like I lost my own mum when I was 16. So I could always yeah. say the reason for that. But, but like even our very best sports star, Tyson Fury in boxing, he's been through it. And, and obviously I think his was yeah. through, through drugs, you know, as well. So, and he's, he still says he always has battles on a daily basis. I actually watched an interview with him last night where he said two weeks, for two weeks after his fight, he's depressed because he's been so, through so much of training camp dedicating his life to a sport and yeah, yeah. For, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, see, I'm kind of like that as well. I need to train every day. I need to do something like... Uh, my my thing is now, when I'm not training for fights and stuff like that, I do a lot of a lot of running. Just get the headphones in, get my oasis on. So, I mean, just go running. Like, I shouldn't... I When I do my training, like, even the last couple of training camps, I run nearly every day. Like, and the, the coach had given out to me, you can't be doing it. You can't be running that much and stuff like that. But I do it purely for a peace of mind. Do you know what I mean? I just get out, get running for an hour, whatever I can cover in that distance wise in that hour, so be it. But it's just purely for once I get my run in the morning, that sets me up for the rest of the day. And then it release all them good endorphins in me and I'm feeling happy again. Do you know what I mean? So I do, but it, it, it is something that I need to do kind of regularly enough. I need to do kind of something nearly every day, every two days, just to keep the head and the blood flowing and keep the good endorphins coming, you know, so. And, and you don't know. It's, uh... it's, 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 it's a great form of therapy, fucking uh, training and exercising you know it's, it's, done, it's um, only very good for the head did you do obviously uh you done obviously a thing for charity i think for obviously uh, your uncle passing was i believe obviously in november yeah, my, my uncle actually he died from suicide last year as well yeah actually he only did it a couple of weeks before me um yeah that was fucking tough man but um yeah so we did we did a 100 kilometer cycle in i think it was september gone i think Sorry, not 100 kilometers, 50 kilometers. We we cycled from um, Waterford City to Dungarvan through the Greenway there. It was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, we've done that with Pavy Point. Uh, I think there was I think there was funds raised up. I only got, got into it last minute, so I didn't get a chance to do any fundraising myself. But um, I've done a separate run then for uh, in November. I've done 100 kilometers for suicide awareness then because I didn't get a chance to raise funds for the one in September because but I, I got a, a one in November now so yeah but then again it's just it's just it's just keep going it's just to give me something to do something to focus on because after the, after the after the intermediate there in uh, October I had no more fights planned up so I just said to jump into it do something for do something for a good cause and to give me something to keep training as well so that's what we did we went over I I done a bit of it over in Tenerife as well I was in Tenerife doing a bit of running with it too so yeah and, and obviously coming back to boxing then obviously after you know, after a period of time away, obviously back, been in an idiots and, and things like that. How did you find being back? Obviously, I guess it's like anything after a period of time, you're a bit rusty and things like that. Was that the plan to get back and have a few fights there before turning pro? Uh, yeah, well, that, that was it. But I was I had show fights coming up before that that got cancelled. So obviously what happened was 
when I got when I tried to do what I did, the hanging and stuff like that, when I went into a coma, my head, my brain was swelled and stuff. So we didn't know whether I was actually going to be able to fight again because I had a couple of fights coming up and I got uh I didn't pass medicals to fucking to fight, like you know the kind of way. Mm-hmm. So we didn't actually know whether we we're going to be allowed to get the all clear to go boxing the to box in the intermediate. So I went to a head specialist in um the radiology department in Mullingar and we went for a private um MRI scan and thank God we got that and then we got the all clear as well from the neurologist that was uh was looking over my case that, that day as well. Uh, sorry, when I was in the hospital that time. So they signed me all off of it. There was no brain injuries. And we, we, we got to go. We actually, we got to go ahead about five or six days before the before the weigh-ins for the um, intermediate. So it was a close call. Yeah. <laughs> but we got there in the end. And I was just, I was delighted. My plan was, I did, well, I didn't know what the story was with this new boxing motion with Jay. But my plan was with linking in with Pascal anyway, we were going to turn pro inevitably. So we just needed a couple of fights to get the ring rust off and just to get back in, see what it was feel like. Especially it was good because we were boxing in the intermediates, there was no head guards. So I'd, I'd never boxed with, without head guards before. So that gave me a little insight into what it's going to be like without it as well. So it was good. That was probably the perfect competition, actually, to get the ring rust off and get back in. We were going to go for the elites as well, but I injured my wrist in the, the quarterfinal of the intermediates and we barely just got through with the semis uh, with it. So... I took a bit of time off, let it rest up, and yeah, so we'll just go again now. Let's see what happens. How are you obviously finding? Obviously, I know quite a few of the boxers, obviously, in Pascal's, obviously, Jim, obviously, Thomas Carty, the stingiest man I've ever met. <laughs> uh, Calvin Crowley, time, really. um, Craig, there's, there's quite a lot, of, obviously, of fighters there. You've obviously Shane, Shane Meaton, obviously, is making his debut as well. How, how, are you find, how are you finding being obviously involved with a pro stable? Oh, I love, I love, I love being a Pascal. So I, I trained in Pascal since I'm a kid, like since I was. Oh shit, that's after going off there. One second, no. There we go. There we go. So I, I've been training in Pascal while I was actively training, fighting as an amateur when I was younger, like 13, 14, 15. I used to be in Pascal's gym all the time. And Luke Keeler used to be there. John O'Carroll, uh, Steve Armand, Spike was there at that, that the time. Um, had Niall Kennedy did loads. I was in always in around the gym with uh, Pascal when I was younger. And then it was just kind of last year, as I said, when I decided to give this boxing a good go again, um, that I had no really intentions of staying around amateur. Do you know what I mean? My intention was to do it as a professional because that's what I wanted to do my whole life. But obviously didn't do it when, it, when the time came. I ended off doing other things. But now I just said, I'll give it one last try while it is. But um, that's when I jumped back in. Then I started sparring, started sparring with Cattle and Daniel. Um, Cattle's 3-0 and now. He's doing very well. Um, Danny as well is 3-0. and so there's been a good few mixtures of spars there. There's other lads that come over. We obviously have all the SPG, SPG lads that um, Pascal are linked in with as well. Him and John Cavanagh, the heat, I think Pascal kind of takes over the striking side of boxing side of it. So any lads that are over there in my way that are coming over sessions, I'm inspiring them as well. And I just thought it's a, good, it's, a great, it's a great environment to be around. It's not about all oh, feel good vibes everywhere. Do you know what I mean? As I said there, I mentioned the... Uh, Thomas Carthy there as well, the superstar of the club, you know, but <laughs> that's a, uh, ah, Thomas is sound, I know Thomas since I'm a little nipper, you know what I mean, I remember being Has he bought you a seat. coffee yet? Say again? Has he bought you a coffee? No, he didn't, but my car broke down here a couple of weeks ago, he gave me a lift home with it from the, <laughs> from the club, did he so charge uh, we, we let him off. Say again? Oh, Mercy. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over it. I, but, I, uh, think, I think yeah. I'm on the verge of him hitting my right hook. Um, I, I don't yeah. know how. Don't that, that big left hand. That big left hand is where it's at. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, obviously on the great news. Obviously we started off the interview. We obviously mentioned you were turning pro. People's watching this and they're going, "Where are you turning pro?" We've had to listen to this whole interview. You're going to make your debut, I believe, on J- Jay's obviously show on the first of March um, at the warehouse the in yeah. Red Cow Hotel. So we're we're pretty much what about six six seven weeks out from obviously your pro day. Yeah, six or seven weeks out, you know, yeah. So um, yeah, everything's going well in the middle of camp as it is, and started sparring last week, and you know, it's just going to go up and up now. Just looking for more different kind of varieties of sparring partners for the next couple of weeks. I just kept myself back in the best shape, best shape possible that I possibly can to make a make a proper name for myself and get on get on a good start and a right foot, and let's show everyone what I'm about. You know what I mean? What what can people obviously expect of your style? If you were to sort of if you were to sort of mention your style of boxing, who would you probably say, you know, if you obviously think of other boxers, who would you say you have a style similar to? Mm, I don't know. I have a very kind of 
I don't know. I can't admit. See, I, I, my, my favorite fighter of all time is Ricky Hatton. So I try my best to base myself on him. Not base myself, but as I was younger, I love my body shots. Me coming up over over the top left hooks, stuff like that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, we're still adjusting from the amateur kind of style into the programs. You know what I kind of way. So you know, it, it it'll develop as it goes along. Do you know what I kind of way. I'm I'm not really sure where we're, I know what what we're doing. Like, but we're not really basing ourselves on anyone. Do you know what I kind of way. I like yeah. obviously we love watching Canelo with. Trying to, to base ourselves as much as if we can off him, obviously. Take with the back bones. You know what I mean? But you're gonna you're gonna be taking bits and pieces off everyone. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I even the lads in the club, like I Danny, especially I mean Danny uh, Danny O'Sullivan, that's what I'm talking about. Uh the way he boxes and stuff like that, it's just slip and roll, slip and roll, coming in off big hooks, right hands. You know what I mean? There's little bits here and there that you're gonna pick up as you go along, but you're gonna learn a lot as you get into the ring as well. Do you know what I mean? Like there's only so much you can learn while you're in the in the gym, do you know what I mean? You, you're going to pick up things as you what what will work and what's not working when you get into the ring and stuff like that as well. Do you know what I mean? So, look, I'm like a sponge at the minute. I'm learning off everyone. I'm taking everything in that I, that I possibly can, and do you know what I mean? I'm just happy. I'm I'm, I'm in a good place. Man. I'm delighted. Obviously, smaller gloves selling tickets. How are you looking looking forward? I guess obviously being able to hit somebody with smaller gloves on, but obviously being able to. Able to sell tickets and things like that as well. These things you're looking forward to, they build in the fan base and showing people how much support yeah. you bring your show. Yeah, well, look, I have a, I'm running off two towns here. I'm from Blanchestown originally, but I've lived in Mullingar now for the last seven or eight years. So, you know what I mean? We're going to get a good following from both towns. Um, we're going to go with the minimum of tickets for the town. But um, as people start seeing what we're about and how the fights are going to be planned, I'm sure it's going to go bigger and bigger. Do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, with the gloves and that as well. Yeah, so I, 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 we've, I was, we were, I think we were fighting with ten ounce the last time in the intermediates, but they're a different kind of ten ounce. The more spongy, anti. You know what I mean? These ones are pure leather, out for cutting. Like, but yeah, we spar in sixteen ounces, and then we get under the pads straight away. I'll throw me back onto me ten ounces, and yeah, the power that's getting lifted on the pads, man, is uh, yeah, it's, 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 I, I can't wait to start landing on the eyebrows and underneath the fucking chin, man. Well, what, what way are you gonna campaign on? <laughs> Say again? What way are you going to campaign out as a pro? Yeah, well, we're going to get down to light middle for the first uh, fight. But um, I, I'm thinking about, get, I, I want to drop back down to the welterweight then for, before we start challenging for titles and stuff like that. But, you know, the, the first couple of fights are only, I'm only going to be learning the ropes, really, you know, that kind of way. So I don't think a big dramatic weight cut is needed, you know. But when I start go, go, looking to get into rankings and stuff like that and trying to get to title fights, uh, welterweight will be probably where I'm going to try and campaign at, yeah. So we're providing I get a good nutritionist, you know. Once the once the nutrition's right and you know, the, the the diet is where it, it needs to be, it shouldn't be a problem. So I, mean, I would I was I weighed in at seventy five for the intermediate gone, but I was up and down at seventy two a week before the weigh in. So I, was, I actually I actually had to put on weight to kind of do you know what I mean, just to be yeah, underneath the so the, the weight's not really an issue. Just go once I once I eat properly and have the right, proper uh, food and stuff like that, it, it, I'm putting the work as well. It just flies off. Definitely. Well, well, look. Obviously, we've got to the end of the interview. Obviously, I can see the wee timer. Obviously, running down there. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we've sort of done this interview in a way because you nearly feel as if you can sort of get a connection with someone straight away from the start. We obviously have your, you have obviously your, your, your motivation, your dedication. Obviously, what you've been through in life to this point. Uh, are you going to be at the press conference on Friday? Yeah, I'll be there for it. Yeah, I'll be there for it. Yeah. Obviously, get to meet you in person as well. Hopefully, we're able to put this out in advance, but. It's been obviously. Man, I have to get myself a nice little, uh, like a nice little Hugo Boss team now and just look well. You know, just get the old watch on and all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thomas Cardi might lend you one of his Tyson Fury tops. Oh, I was going to think of that, the old jacket. Yeah, it look, it looks class on him though, but it's like a sleeping bag of me, I think. <laughs> but look, obviously, it's been have great, to get obviously. Out for about months. He did. <laughs> it's been great, obviously, getting to know you. But obviously, thanks very much for your time. Um, obviously, anybody that's watching this, obviously, you can you can follow Richie. Um, on Instagram, obviously we're going to tag him on Instagram, um, so you can follow his career. But thanks very much, Richie, for your time. I'm sure I'll catch up with you on Friday. And we'll know that. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Yeah. And we'll get another Thank interview you, yeah. after your winning successful debut as well in March. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, I'm still pretty good then. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richie. Listen, thanks for your time. time. See, on, see you later, Thank you very thanks. much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.